okay so it started so in short we'll see the use of this connection who use this connections and why so the first web based user interface is used by uh, many people and different category of people let's see the first category is the data analyst who knows the business little bit and they want to analyze the data and see the business changes impact or some analysis they want to do so they log into the console they go to the database they query something they extract the data in csv or excel and then they use that data so that sort of first people who do and uh, use the web based access they use same basic access to verify the data aggregate the data for example someone want to see what is the mtd sales today uh, till date uh, like some sort of metrics they use and just connect to this uh, other web based user who use uh, application is administrator when administrator want to create a user when ad administrator wants to give an access and other thing that that's when they use uh, this thing. Uh, these are the second type of users that we generally see. Okay, so those people use every most of the people has access to the web based interface so that they can verify the other things that they are using uh, through connecting to the interface. Okay. So second type of uh, users or the second type of connection is command line clients, uh, like just we use a snow SQL, who use that some developer use this connection to yeah. build the actual. Give me a minute, okay. So some uh, who use the Snow SQL client is some batch users, some developers who create a code and they just want to use that batch user to verify uh, some commands in the code. Those use the Snow SQL command. Um, and uh, there is a limitation on the web console that you cannot download a large amount of data. So what if I want, if I query it and I have, uh, I'm able to query only 10,000 rows. What if I want a data more than 10,000 rows? So then I'll use a command line client and run my command to extract and download the data. So those are the users who use that uh, type of um, connection. ODBC, JDBC drivers are used by uh, other applications who are connecting to the snowflake something like tableau something like uh, you want to connect excel to the snowflake you want to connect some other applications third party like some reporting tools you want to use uh, you want to uh, again uh, if you don't want to use python if it's a java programming that's where you can use the jdbc driver to connect it uh, some old applications which you want to connect to uh, can use the ODBC driver. Uh, then some of the application, like fourth point is some of the connections uh, and ODBC and JDBC who, who are the users who use, generally the users who connect to those applications like Tableau and other application which I mentioned. Um, or java application want to java web application want to connect uh, those applications connect to it native connections is something where uh, something like spark and python where you want to interactively in in the batch or programmatically do have have uh, interaction with snowflake that's where you use to connect you use that sort of connections and third party uh, where any other application like Informatica, BI tools like um, ThoughtSpot or to, or Power BI, um, that sort of application, they have then uh, third-party uh, connectors they can use. 
moving to the next which is the quick thing as uh, you already know snowflake support three cloud providers uh, you can host or create a snowflake account uh, on these three public clouds amazon web services google cloud platform which is gcp and azure microsoft azure uh, right now these are the three major cloud uh, providers or cloud platforms on which snowflake is supported um, Snowflake started with the web AWS and then they expanded to Google Cloud and then Azure. So obviously they are very mature in uh, AWS, then Google and then Azure. So up till now, I have worked mostly on the AWS backed uh, Snowflake accounts uh, where most of the things uh, are hosted on AWS. Uh, but I do. I will not be surprised uh, if some people are coming with Snowflake on Google Cloud. Why it is? So most of the companies which use like uh, retailers, uh, jaise, uh, eBay le lo, ya fir, uh, Big Bazaar, T Mart, or if you consider the US retailers like Kohl's, uh, Walmart, um, ya fir, Target, these are the retailers, they don't prefer to use AWS. Why? Because AWS or AWS is a part of Amazon. Uh, Amazon is a big company and AWS is a sub part of it. So they do, and Amazon is mainly in retail, so they don't want to give their money to their competitors, right? So that's why they prefer other vendors. And being in the US, I can see that uh, how dominating Amazon is. Uh, other Indian language may terminology may, uh, or analogy may, if I have to tell you, Reliance. Reliance is the big company. When I say big company, Reliance is in petroleum, Reliance is in retail, Reliance is a Reliance brand itself or a company itself holding a Geo. Geo is, I guess, till now not a separate company. It's a part within that big company, correct? Agar Airtel Jio ko paisa de raha hai, Airtel Reliance ko paisa de raha hai, kisi services ke liye, right? It means that they are giving money to their competitor and their competitor, which is Reliance, which is also holding a Jio, can use that money or pump that money to Jio to get a domination in the market or and they will kill Reliance. So most of the retailers are not preferring to go with uh, AWS backed Snowflake or even on the AWS. So that's why they are, they move either on Google or even Azure. Again, in, if they go with Google, Google also has some retail mainly in mobile and other things. So they don't go with the Google, they go with the Azure where Microsoft is just a, a technology company it's not a retail or anything else, right? So that trend is coming. And in this diagram, you can see that most of the dominance uh, that Snowflake has in the uh, North and South America, even mostly in the North America uh, region uh, and mostly in the uh, USA, that part only. And uh, on the East Coast, again, where most of hub is on the East Coast rather than the West Coast. The reason is that most of the AWS data centers are in a west east coast rather than a west coast. Then second, you'll see in the Europe and Middle East, again, here also you'll see uh, most of the dominance you'll see in the uh, Europe and in Asia Pacific, it is in South Asia uh, or um, in India, mainly their, their operations you'll see. A few operations are in the China and Japan, but mostly it's in the uh, Australia, I think, and on that South Asia region. So these are the cloud region, which if you see this diagram, uh, it maps to AWS regions, uh, most, most of those things. Now, this is very important, uh, Snowflake additions. They have different flavors, like when you go for buying a phone, iPhone 15, start with normal iPhone 15, iPhone 15 Mac, Pro, Pro Max, then S. So these are the series. 
based on the different requirements of customers. So similarly, Snowflake has uh, different editions. The standard one, the basic one, start with. Um, it's an interactive level offering, uh, provide full access, but in limited capability. Uh, uh, it has unlimited access to Snowflake standard features. Um, it, it, it is being designed to um, give most of the features, but at a lower cost. So where you need a heavy load and other thing, uh, the features changes and then you have to update your account to different editions. So standard is the basic one. Uh, in real project, I have not seen the standard being used. Most of the enterprises use enterprise edition, uh, not the standard one. Uh, so standard may be for education or something or training purpose, uh, standard edition is mostly used, but not for, even, even for development, I haven't seen standard edition being used. It's always the enterprise edition I have seen. The enterprise edition provide full features and services <coughs> of standard edition, but additionally, some other features design especially for large scale enterprises and organization. Uh, we'll see in the detail the standard or enterprise make difference with the concept features add with the uh, concept features may uh, uh, available nahi uh, We'll see some of, the, some of those are fail safe, uh, zero clone and that sort of features are there. We'll see it in detail in next slides. What are the different features are there? The next edition is business critical edition. Is make you get all the features of enterprise edition, and of course, enterprise editions has all the features of standard edition. Uh, but in business critical editions, what is the difference between the business critical and enterprise? Is it gives the higher level of data protection and support. Uh, so whenever you store a business critical data, and that's where Snowflake gives uh, extra uh, security protection and support, um, and that's a business critical. Uh, and this is for mainly the sensitive data, particularly PHI data uh, that has must be comply with uh, HIPAA, and I trust CSF regulations. So HIPAA is the one uh, regulatory organization for healthcare data. And PHI is nothing, uh, personal healthcare information is there. Uh, or there is a PII also where uh, personal information to identify uh, individual, right? So like your name, email ID, phone number, address, these are the informations from which other number, PAN card number, these are the information or social security number, these are the in PII data. So in project, you may hear a lot of time about PII data. So that is the, remember the term PII, PHI and PCI very important so maybe in uh, dummy project you may not hear it or but understand real projects dealing with the this type of data is very important you should not see a customer name customer email id you should not see if you see it in a plain text either that data in a lower environment should be massaged like uh, some dummy value should be there uh, like John Doe or something like that, it should not be actual customer data. It should be a dummy data. Otherwise, it should be encrypted so that you cannot read that what data it is. Any question on the PI data, PHI data, PCI data? I'll wait here for two minutes and wait for at least two questions. Okay, can anybody ask? I see the four hand raised. Uh, any question, Niranjan, uh, Shivendra, Vijay, Sandeep?
person. Okay, I am waiting for two questions to be asked on this, uh, the business critical edition or anything related to this data. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, actually, having one doubt, sir. Uh, sir, uh, data is stored in uh, like AWS storage, na? In Snowflake. In the back end, yes. In the back end. So, it could have like uh, security by AWS only, na? So, yes, yes. So, then how it provides extra security mm -hmm. then? Yeah. So, it is the AWS uh, Snowflake has created a layer to be data have to be more secure now agar aap aws mein bucket create karte ho correct so can you you can make it public okay when you create a bucket you also you have to make sure you don't make it public second when you create a bucket you don't make you make sure that uh, you have the RBAC role based access, access control, you have versioning enabled, you should have a right bucket policy on that. Uh, again, for in terms of security, you should have ACLs applied, uh, encryption applied at a rest. The key should be encryption keys, KMS keys that you use should be rotated, it should not be fixed. So, a lot of things are there. But you do this manually if you do your own AWS account and store the data. So on behalf of you, Snowflake does all those things who should have access. On top of that, and then this is managed by service layer where it everything they like uh, uh, Shivendra should have access to table, uh, employee table from company, uh, schema from organization database, right? This is the standard. So how should be the access and a bucket level? You don't have to worry about that. That all things will be handled by the Snowflake, right? And that's how it provides the extra security uh, on top of that AWS. So Snowflake writes in the packet and don't worry about what is happening in the backend with the Snowflake, like, it, even though it stores the data on uh, S3 you, or EBS, you don't have to worry. Every And even I also don't know in the back end what they could use to do that. Even most of the people in the Snowflake won't know the code because it's that much secure. So uh, that's their operations in the back end that they use. So this, these are the extra security they provide on top of, of the data in the Snowflake, including encryption and everything. Okay, sir. Okay, one more question. Or I will ask a question if you want. I talked about PII, PHI, and PCI. Can anybody uh, tell me what is PCI? Okay, I'll explain. It's a credit card information. So, uh, credit cards frauds are a lot there. Um, so. I don't know, in, in, in India, it's more secure that what I see because you get an OTP, every credit card, when you make a transaction, it is mandatory that either you get an OTP or there will be a PIN which you enter. In US, it's not like that. Uh, if you have credit card number, uh, expiry date and CVV, that's it. Uh, anyone can swipe or even not swipe, even anyone can make the purchases on behalf of you if they know three these three things. Okay. So if you know if you can if the data is in plain text, then you can see the credit card number, you can see the CVV, you can see the expiry date, and you can use that to make the purchase on behalf of that credit card, right? So it's not secure. So they make it more secure by uh, encrypting that data on, and securing that data. Uh, 
and personally i think uh, even if if this mastercard and visa card uh, are not that secure in us at least what i see uh, compared to india where it's more more secure and upi and other thing are very fast uh, but that's the thing that's the pci phi you know right healthcare information uh, in us or even in europe healthcare information is uh, treated as a secure most secure information uh, and they don't want to give details like uh, what disease you have what is your name what medicine you take that sort of information they didn't don't disclose or consider or how many visits you made um, that's considered as a very sensitive information and that's the phi information and there is a uh, compliances uh, organization just like in india we have sebi which controls um, the stock market right a regulatory organization or rbi which monitors the economy similarly uh, in us uh, it's a hipaa uh, i think it's not just us but most of the healthcare uh, countries where it is implemented hipaa is a compliance uh, regulatory organization so that's the business critical editions where uh, based on the regulations whatever the things are required that are in place so that customer doesn't have to worry about it then the last part is virtual private snowflake up till now you see the uh, public cloud or public hosting so virtual private snowflake offers um, highest level of security for organization that are uh, give more importance on the data security such as financial institute or government agencies uh, which are very sensitive uh, data sensitive organization uh, other large enterprise that collect analyze and share highly sensitive data uh, these are hosted on the virtual private snowflake it includes all the features this this edition include all the features from business critical enterprise edition or even standard but completely on a separate snowflake environment isolated from other snowflake account uh, which is, that is vps account do not share any resources with the account outside of vps um However, they may choose to enable the data sharing while non-VPS customer. So we'll see what is the data sharing is. Uh, now, can you tell me, here it is stated that in virtual private Snowflake, data is, is in a completely a separate Snowflake environment. What is the data, what, what type of, which layer they are talking here? इनका कहने का मतलब है ये जो वर्चुअल प्राइवेट स्नोफ्लेक एडिशन है इसमें जो डेटा है आपका वो सेपरेट स्नोफ्लेक एनवायरनमेंट में रखा जाता है वो शेयर नहीं किया जाता राइट व्हाट टाइप ऑफ डेटा हियर दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कैन एनीबॉडी गेस ऑथेंटिकेशन टाइप ऑफ डेटा लाइक पासवर्ड एंड यूजर नेम लाइक दैट हम्म वो कहाँ पे स्टोर होता है अगर मैं एक यूजर बनाता हूँ मेरा यूजर नेम एंड अदर थिंग कहाँ पे स्टोर होता है कहाँ पे स्टोर होता होगा कैन एनी बडी गेस डज इट स्टोर ऑन माई अकाउंट और इज इट स्टोर ऑन विच इज इट स्टोर ऑन स्टोरेज इज इट स्टोर ऑन कॉम्प्यूट और इज इट स्टोर ऑन शेयर सर्विसेज कहाँ पे स्टोर होता होगा विच लेयर कॉम्प्यूट शेयर होता है डिफरेंट अकाउंट विद इन द स्नो फ्लैक्स but in vps it is separated it is separately stored on different environment which is more restricted okay so like if someone uh, hacks the system they they can hack that central layer 
services layer they can get a metadata if they get a metadata they can they may use to go to the data it's very hard to go to the data but i'm just making one example worst case scenario this may happen but if it's a more sensitive data right so that's how they prefer there are like in you Europe, there are certain countries they don't allow data to go outside of their country. There are a lot of countries which don't allow to go data outside of their countries. Like China is one of those. Just uh, take an example of uh, Uber. Uber works in almost 160 countries. 160 country may work. Karte. So Uber ka server raiga, kaha pe ho server, ek location pe, do location pe, they cannot have that in 160 countries, right? Because they need an infrastructure and lot of, so usme se ho bolega, thik hai, mujhe 160 country, abhi jaysay Uber service deta hai India mein, and now Uber started services and Uber has a server in, in India, uh, and they give the service to Pakistan also. Then Pakistan, all the data, Pakistan mein koi Uber use kar raha hai, uh, pe ja raha hai, uska number kya hai, everything will be, that data will be stored in India, right? So, if someone from India can go ahead and, because it's sitting in India, if some government authority say we need this data, do whatever and we want this data. So, now, by law, they have to follow the order of government and they can extract the data and give it to the Indian government. But some countries say, no, we want our data to be on, in our country only. We don't want that data to go outside of our countries. Nice. That sort of things are there where uh, some countries does not support. They say, we don't bother which company you are. Uh, even if you are a multinational company, we don't care. Our data, our personal data, our citizens' data should always store in uh, our locations only. So, wo case may VPS uh, use kar sakte, other editions hai. And I'm just giving an example, uh, like how they operate. Okay. So, this is the fourth edition of uh, Snowflake that can be used. Clear? So, if you see important Though he addition is standard and enterprise. Extra feature care business may it gives more security to the data. Uh, what type of the data? PI, PCI, PHI data. VPS may kya hota hai? They give everything as same as standard and enterprise, but everything is hosted in a private cloud or private snowflake or private account. The shared services may nahi hota hai. The shared services uses a separate account to store that thing. So that are the only differences between these different editions. Feature-wise, there is no difference. Got it? Yes? Yes, sir. Now, yes, I want sir. to hear a few more questions from you before moving to next slide. Does anybody has any question? And feel free to ask question. It's a more interactive session I want to have. Agar aap question poocho ge, to jo bande sun rahe, unko bhi jada knowledge aega. The more time we spend, that will be helpful. Can anybody ask a question? Okay, I'll give you one scenario and now you tell me which edition I should use. I'm making some examples. I'm a 
company just like uh, uber who is uh, providing the transportation services shared transportation services now i hold the customer information um, and i operate let's say in just one country for right now to make a simplify i operate in one country uh, and my data is increasing i have a lot many customers and other thing um, i do hold some personal data uh, like pi information so which one is the uh, most suitable edition here out of this four editions business critical edition business critical editions okay now i am a company uh, whose operation is a retail it's a retail company and i get a sales data once i get a sales data i just put that sales data i'm i have a data warehouse and i use that data warehouse to query and generate uh, reports uh, generate some metrics which one is the best suitable edition i can use enterprise edition so uh, why i mean why i can not use a business critical uh, and why i can use the enterprise and Maybe let's say i also have a pi that. data in uh, pi data then now tell me which edition i can use enterprise or business critical if we are dealing with pi then we would go for business critical edition mm -hmm. so okay uh, here is a little uh, twist here on i will go with enterprise edition why enterprise edition can you can deal with sensitive data also you don't have to it will not be comply with these things like ipa or other thing and it's a retail company so no need to go to the business critical i can use only business critical where it is affecting my business if my virtual warehouse is down it will not affect my operation meaning agar virtual warehouse down hai sorry uh, data warehouse down hai तो स्टोर बंद रहेगा स्टोर पे सेल कर नहीं सकते ये नहीं होगा स्टोर पे सेल होते ही रहेगा दीज आर योर बैक एंड सिस्टम सो दीज आर क्रिटिकल डेटा बट नॉट अ बिजनेस क्रिटिकल कि बिजनेस ही बंद हो जाए यू होल्ड अ पी आई डेटा बट यू हैव अ वे टू टोकनाइज डी टोकनाइज और इनक्रिप्ट और डिक्रिप्टेड बट आई एम लेट से इन विच केस इट विल बी आई हैव टू यूज अ बिजनेस क्रिटिकल same retail company same retail company is storing a pi data but now i am using snowflake for my operations meaning point of sale system hai uh, jahan aur inventory system hai waha pe data store hai mera snowflake mein agar snowflake down hua to main sell nahi kar sakta inventory kitni hai main check nahi kar sakta so that will be a business problem business band ho jayega and then if you have to use use the business critical edition there not the enterprise edition use the enterprise edition where it will not affect the enterprise if it goes down right so if it's a business critical then use the business critical edition now third example i have uh, i am a government agency a government uh, and government department i have uh the information related to uh security of nation some information related to security of nation uh or uh, it is related to crime then criminals uh criminal history uh, that sort of information is there laws and other thing which type of edition i should use in this case virtual private vps yeah. sir correct so in that case because it's a very very sensitive highly sensitive data and i should use the virtual private snowflake in that case no matter what i do whether i build the uh, application front end application or a data warehouse for that 
doesn't matter i should use because it's the very sensitive data highly sensitive data i should use the virtual private snowflake for that okay ye charo edition samajh mein aa gayi yes yes sir Now, there are feature difference in this four editions and we'll go in a d for those uh, okay so first of all we'll see the snowflake features uh, right now today we'll just discuss at a high level and we'll go one by one in coming lectures what those features are some of them related the first point is related to security governance and data protection so snowflake ye area mein kya karta hai kya feature deta hai jisse main data सिक्योर कर सकू जिससे मैं गवर्न कर सकू मीनिंग किसको एक्सेस देना है किसको नहीं देना है कौन से डेटा को देना है कौन से डेटा को नहीं देना है दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग्स और डेटा बढ़ रहा है कम हो रहा है डिलीट करना है मूव करना है सो दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग्स हू डज दैट गवर्नेंस एक्टिविटी एंड डेटा प्रोटेक्शन हाउ आई कैन प्रोटेक्ट द डेटा सेंसिटिव डेटा टोकनाइज एंड क्रिएट so we are seeing what are the features available in snowflake to do these things so pehla uh, feature hai we can choose the geographical location where your data is stored based on your region so as i earlier mentioned uh, when you creating an account you can select the region us east us west pacific asia pacific europe middle east you can choose any region geographical location where you want to store your data now tell me this feature comes under which does it come um, under the security governance or data protection so snowflake provide this feature where you can store data in any region uh, wherever you want So mostly people will consider it under the data governance where you want to govern your data more securely so or to the region you know where you are storing the data so that is the first feature uh, that snowflake provide then snowflake also provide authentication through standard user and password credentials so whenever some users you onboard it created a it creates a username and password sometimes you have to also enable the multi factor authentication so that um, you can enable it yeah and you can see in the bottom the enhance that is called as the enhance authentication so what comes under the enhance authentication is multi factor authentication so once you provide username and password it uh, either comes an otp or push button type of um, RSA code you have to add so that it get verified uh, twice. Uh, then sometimes it federated authentication or single sign on. So if you belong to some organization, you don't want to have a separate username and password for Snowflake. You can have an enterprise username and password, and just you can use that automatically to connect to the Snowflake. that is called as a single sign on so and which is a federated authentication type of thing that you can use snowflake also provide the author authorizations just like oauth or you can also use the external authorizers to create a token so sometimes you use snow sql api in which you need just a token uh api is app application programming interface where you from program uh you do the application to application communication via programs so that in that case you call api uh either http rest api you use uh and then you submit a request and then it process and you get a response that sort of apis are there uh which you can use this apis we'll see in the detail the sql rest api or what are the different api ways are there 
in Snowflake through which you can create an API, invoke an API. But in Enhance Authentication, Snowflake provides these two features or three features actually, single sign-on, multi-factor authentication and author co-auth. Ye clear hua aapko? Yes. Okay. Now, um, let's go further and then I will show you what these are about. So next point is all communication between client and servers are protected to TLS. So basically this is the communication between the client and server and the data is protected in that network through TLS, okay? Uh, then next is deployment inside the cloud platform or VPC or so you create a separate VPC, virtual private cloud and use this VPC for uh, when you deploy it. You can also have isolation of a data uh, using S3 policy controls, uh, if it's AWS, or you can have Azure storage access control or Google Cloud storage access permissions that you can use to um, isolate your data uh, in different scenarios. Okay, now let me show you about these few things which we discussed about. Like, first thing you know. Uh, about choosing a region so when you come to the uh, login page पहला तो हमने देखा था जब स्नूफ्लेक अकाउंट बनाया तभी हमने रीजन चूज किया था राइट इफ यू रिमेंबर यस ओके नाउ द फर्स्ट थिंग व्हाट इट टेल्स इज अबाउट यूजिंग अ यूजर नेम एंड पासवर्ड यू कैन यूज अ यूजर नेम एंड पासवर्ड एंड क्रेडेंशियल्स टू लॉग इन ऑथेंटिकेशन थ्रू यूजर नेम एंड पासवर्ड इफ माय अकाउंट इज एसोसिएटेड दिस इज माय अकाउंट नंबर इफ दिस अकाउंट नंबर is enabled for single sign on by the organization let's say hamara brainwork uh, organization hai brainworks organization ka uh, ek server hai uh, hosting server hai and that hosting server pe let's say uh, aap login karte ho and add this as your trusted application so yahan pe single sign on uh, single sign on icon aayega or button aayega if you click that first you will sign on to your domain and then it will redirect to the snowflake so that's the single sign on things that comes into the picture right now in our edition we have not configured that but if someone uh, is an enterprise account it is already authenticated so you will get that uh, single sign on enable now let's see uh, Just give me a minute. I think I'm just trying to see what is the password.
Just give me a minute. I'm pulling the password. Till the time, does anybody has a question? Yes, sir. I have one question. Yeah. In the features, uh, you wrote that uh, VPC or VNet. So is there any difference between VPC and VNet? Mm -hmm. So yes. Uh, virtual private cloud, okay, or when you create your virtual servers within separate private servers, uh, then networks jo hai, network shared. Hai. What I mean is when you connect, I have a LAN, okay. So, pele, I'm not sure whether you know the LAN or not. Do you know the LAN concept? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. LAN, WAN, MAN. I know that. Yeah. So, pehle, uh, I don't know if companies LAN use karte utna ya nahi, but still some company might use it. Banks use karte rahenge. So, pehle kya hota tha? Do PC hai. Uh, ek room mein. So, you used to connect to cable. Yes, right? sir. Cable se connect karte te, and then you make it one as a server. Uh, other as a client uh, or you if you have 10 computers you make as a server jaha pe ab lan server install karte te, and then others are just you plug and connect so main server se aap kuch install karna chahte you can connect and install or do anything so no need of internet ek dusre ko file share kar sakte te. so that is your private uh, network ओके okay. ये तो हो गया बट व्हाट इफ इफ यू वांट टू कनेक्ट टू इंटरनेट तो वो केस में क्या करते थे दे जो मेन सर्वर है वहां से इंटरनेट को कनेक्ट करते थे एंड एनी ट्रैफिक दैट क्लोज टू इंटरनेट यूज्ड टू गो थ्रू दैट मेन थिंग सो जिसकी वजह से आप यू डोंट हैव टू इंटरैक्ट विद एवरी एवरी सिस्टम doesn't have to interact its own own so that was controlled by the uh, server ye hota tha now then the concept come <coughs> network private network oh, sorry yeah I'm sharing my screen. Share. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Are you are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, so that is then network में क्या होता था? Let's say अभी का network है. मैं आपको कुछ file send करता हूँ. Last time मैंने आपको देखा word में मैंने uh, word file में number one लिखा. So number one is a binary in the backend which store some one zero one zero the combination eight byte में store करता eight bit में. Correct? उसको yes, स्टोर होता होगा तो जब मैं फाइल कॉपी करता हूं तो कॉपी कैसे होता है एक मैंने अगर आपको ईमेल किया या कुछ कनेक्शन आपके लैपटॉप पे मुझे कॉपी करना है तो एक्चुअल में कॉपी मतलब क्या होता है सो so, कॉपी मतलब ये जो सिग्नल है 10 सो so, व्हाट योर कंप्यूटर डस इट इट इज यू सी इट एज अ टेक्स्ट लाइक नंबर या ए बी ए दिखते हैं कैपिटल ए बी सी दिखता है बट बैक एंड में जो नंबर 1010 स्टोर करता है वो सिग्नल बनाता है उसका एंड दैट सिग्नल गेट ट्रांसमिटेड टू योर मशीन नाउ व्हाट हैपन इफ समवन इंटरफेट दैट सिग्नल किसी ने एंड देयर आर टूल्स व्हिच कैन इंटरसेप्ट ऑन अ नेटवर्क सो दो सिस्टम है राइट कनेक्टेड सो यू कैन इंटरफेयर दैट सिग्नल that is going from one ip to another ip 
या आपका आईपी ग्लोबल है राइट इफ यू गो टू वट इज माई आई पी यू कैन गो एंड आई पी एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो गो एंड चेक टू सी वॉट इज द कनेक्शन इट इज मेकिंग ओके तो आप देख सकते हो कि आपके वो आईपी से क्या क्या आउटबाउंड जा रहा है एंड देन यू कैन कनेक्ट नेटवर्क में हैक कर सकते हो ओके डोंट डू दैट डोंट गो इन मच डिटेल टू दैट बट आई एम टेलिंग यू वो जो बाइनरी कोड है वो ट्रांसमिट होता है ऑप्टिकल फाइबर केबल यू माइट हैव हर्ड अबाउट इट राइट सो समवन कैन इंटरसेप्ट दैट समवन कैन रिसीव दैट एंड समवन कैन गेट दैट डेटा एंड सो नाउ व्हेन आई से वर्चुअल नेटवर्क राइट इन द एडिशन लाइक दैट आई मेंशन इन द प्राइवेट you can have your own virtual private servers uh, as well as your networks it means that you can have that networks more secure this a lan ka example diya maine so you will have your own snowflake servers your own uh, private uh, environment or network be you own that network so no one can intercept that network it's not the internet it's not exposed to outside world jaise abhi google search karta hai when you do the google search what google does it connects to all the computers uh, which are hosting website and then it gives you some word out of that it means it's a searchable correct so yes sir whatever is the public information it, it can go and give that information so network say wo आपको मिल जाएगा सो इन द सिक्योर नेटवर्क दे कैन नॉट एक्सेस दैट नेटवर्क डेटा ट्रैफिकिंग तो वो हैक नहीं कर सकते दैट्स व्हाई इट्स मोर सिक्योर वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन एंड आई थिंक वी गॉट यू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से यस सर यस सर हेलो हेलो यस सर एक्चुअली इन लास्ट लेक्चर यू हैव शेयर्ड योर पासवर्ड ऑन योर स्क्रीन विद राहुल सर या आई थिंक आई एम नॉट सीइंग आई हैव नॉट चेंज्ड दैट पासवर्ड समहाउ आई एम नॉट एबल टू गो या नाउ विद द एज आई एम एबल टू सी दैट I think it was stuck in the previous one. Okay, so on your account, now next, हमने क्या देखा था? You have a username and password also. Uh, you can also have the multi-factor authentication enabled and use the multi-factor authentication that as well. So somewhere use multi-factor authentication when you enroll with the multi-factor authentication. यू विल रिसीव यू जैसे कि माइक्रोसॉफ्ट ऑथेंटिकेटर है या कुछ है यू कैन यूज दैट सो आई एम स्टार्टिंग इट ऑन यू एस यू दिस अकाउंट आई एम सेटिंग अप मल्टी फैक्टर ऑथेंटिकेशन दे से यूज द मोबाइल फोन और दे कैन यूज आई पैड और टैबलेट एनी थिंग और लैंड लाइन सो आई से फोन इज अ प्रेफर्ड सो आई जस्ट यूज दैट फोन I'll provide my number. I'll get a uh, message on this. So they say install Duo Mobile. I already have it. Okay. so uh, that's why i say i have 
installed it and then it will ask me to scan this So I scanned it and it gave me a name. TB, TCB. Zero, four, two, seven, eight. So I set this account, leaks, and practice now. Okay, I just set up my uh, authentication and you can see it just tick mark. So I did the multi-factor authentication uh, and it is just giving my number, another thing, and let's say, so I'll say automatically send this to device to your push and i've just logged in um and i just choose this method recommended one i got the push from and just i approved which tells me that from where uh, right so it is enabled so multi-factor authentication is enabled and it is available okay so that's, that's the second feature in terms of security that Snowflake provides that you can have a multi-factor authentication which comes under the advanced authentication. The other one I mentioned you about the single sign on when your organization connects it, you can use your organization username and password rather than creating your own. And that's how you will be able to log in. So our account is not connected to any organization uh, so anyone any organization you create and it has own active directory you can do this there are certain authenticators snowflake author authorizers that use uh, or any other external authorizers that use to connect so other authorizers already have some features into it and you can connect using those authorization right now we don't have it uh, but this is the part or feature is already available. And these features will be mostly available in, yes, in the enterprise uh, edition, but also more suitable for your business critical editions or even the VPS editions that we have, okay? Uh, then all communication between client and server are protected through TLS. Do you know how TLS works? Does anybody know? If not, I'll show you. Does anybody know? Can can anybody tell? Whenever you can anybody know? Does anybody know? Can tell them? Can you tell? So many apko bataya ki communication kaise hota hai, right? Data exchange kaise hota hai? Yes, it goes in an internet. When you connect to an internet, it goes in that format that I mentioned. So HTTPS is the secure protocol that is used to transfer the data. So you can, you will use this TLS to communicate to the external teams via network so that I think the latest one is 1.2 and 1.3 is coming or it's already released. 
So TLS makes sure when you transmit the data through network, it is more secure. So you can see this is the basic diagram, uh, which can tell you how TLS works. You have client, uh, good example. Yeah, first you make the connection request. So that goes from client to server. When you say google.com, it the request goes for connection to the server, whatever the server being used. Then it makes a connection, then it an acknowledgement happen. Whatever the TCP IP use, that's where it happens. Then it use you uh, back a connection, then you say client hello, something you run. The server goes and re responds you. It very certificate validation and other things are happened. So that's how you communicate uh, to your server to TLS. Okay, and the data exchange that or the communication that happens over this network is made secure with the TLS. Okay, this is the same diagram, uh, just a separate representation. This is TCP, this is a network connection, W1 is a network connection, and TLS is a data exchange that is happening. So it says, Client hello, in it share the client key share, a server says hello, server key shared, certificate, and then it finish and returns the message. So that this is, green is the TLS and this blue is the TCP. Okay. So by default, uh, when the snowflake you use the snowflake, it is the TLS is already being used. Okay. Then the next one we saw the deployment inside the cloud private uh, VPC or virtual private cloud that we use I, in AWS or whether in GCP, it is the your virtual private cloud being created for your instances, clusters that you use. Or if you use Azure, it's a VNet, virtual network is get created. Okay. And the data is isolated uh, using the S3 policy controls. So you know there are ACLs, access control uh, templates are there, or access control language is there. So in the S3, if the data is in S3, a lot of ACLs are applied to secure your data. And if it's Azure, it's uh, Azure Storage Access Control. And if it's a Google Cloud, so Google Cloud access permissions are being used. Uh, are you aware about the bucket policies? Yes, sir. Can anybody tell me what are the, why? you use a bucket policy for ACLs? Have you tried to use ACLs? Okay. If not, just practice on S3. Like what is the uh, bucket policy? and why they are being used. Bucket policy and uh, object lifecycle are two different things. Can anybody tell me the difference between the bucket policy and uh, object lifecycle? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, bucket policy related with the, uh, who can access the bucket uh, or who can access the object which is stored in that bucket. Any mm -hmm. object uh, life cycle related with the particular object means after how many days object goes in which uh, type of storage or which type of okay. uh, so it's related with that, sir. 
ओके गुड ये क्वेश्चन भी पूछा जाता है इंटरव्यू में सो बी प्रिपेयर्ड विद दैट डिफरेंस बिटवीन दिस टू बकेट पॉलिसी एंड ऑब्जेक्ट वर्जनिंग और ऑब्जेक्ट लाइफ साइकिल ओके सो दैट इज अबाउट सम ऑफ द फीचर्स दैट स्नोफ्लेक हैज इन टर्म्स ऑफ सिक्योरिटी गवर्नेंस एंड डेटा प्रोटेक्शन देन दिस फीचर्स द नेक्स्ट वन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट रिलेटेड टू पीएचआई डेटा uh these are available in the business critical edition not in the standard edition where there are for phi data you identify the phi data and then it gives the uh information or controls uh that are prescribed in the hipa compliance and that's why it says it's need a business critical or higher edition but this feature is available in snowflake automatic data encryption by snowflake using manage keys snowflake manage keys uh, so if you are storing a data in sc you use a kms keys right so snowflake in the back end may be using the aws kms keys but the key rotation and everything is managed by the snowflake so that's what it is telling this feature is available by default by the snowflake you don't have to enable and other things it's already available then you have a role level access control this feature is also available what is mean by role level access control sorry object level access control uh, which in snowflake you can also have a role level access control as well uh, because each row is the columnar format uh, and uh, these are stored in micro partition so ultimately it's object level uh, access control is provided Uh, we'll see it in detail so not in the back end what is happening but in the front end how i can give an access to particular table so that is governed by this access object level access control then next feature that in the security that snowflake has time travel a very very unique feature and important feature that none of the other is providing time travel okay so what it means by traveling time travel so it is by default one day for standard account and additional 90 days up to that is allowed for enterprise uh, account uh, and it is query historical uh, data in a table so if you make the change in a table you can go back and query the historical data the restoring and cloning of historical data in database schemas and table so i have a table and eight days back i made a change then two days back again i made change and today also i made a change and now i want to see what was my data in my table when three days back or five days back so you can go time travel and get that data back okay that is very very important feature none of the other databases are providing that can redshift provide this have you seen in redshift to do the time travel main again repeat karta hu because ye feature bahut hi important hai main again repeat karta hu So, आपने एक डेटा में लास्ट टेन डेज में पांच बार चेंज किया नाउ यू वांट टू गेट टू द ओरिजिनल डेटा फाइव डेज बैक का जो डेटा था और टेन डेज बैक का जो डेटा था सो कैन यू डू दिस थिंग इन रेड शिफ्ट कैन यू डू दिसंगल लाइक Yeah, someone yes, yes. It is, it is similar like versioning, but in version S3 versioning, you go manually and go version and then retrieve the version. Here, Snowflake will do by on behalf of you. So only Snowflake has this feature up till now. At least what I what I have heard. there are other database single store and they are coming with a similar type of feature but uh, 
for right now i just saw in this move like time travel feature so again i am repeating this feature ye feature se aap kya kar sakte ho 10 din ya 90 days pehle mera data kya tha wo aap check kar sakte ho that's a very important feature and not just only row entire table i am talking about entire table 90 days yeah let's say till the 90 days last 90 days me maine kya kya changes kiye wo sab store hote hai and i can retrieve this thing not only that with this data i can create a copy to so, mujhe monthly month end data cop banana hai so you can have three copies of that you can restore or clone that historical data in a database और एक ब्यूटी बताऊं इस स्नोफ्लेक की बाकी डेटाबेसिस में आप क्लोन करते हो क्लोन मीनिंग कॉपी यू कॉपी द डेटा सो लेट से आई हैव वन टेराबाइट ऑफ डेटा आई मेक अ कॉपी ऑफ दैट तो क्या होगा तो एक और टेराबाइट का टेबल बनाओगे आप लेट से रेडशिफ्ट में या कोई भी इसमें करेक्ट because you want a copy of that data you cannot create a view because view will be dynamic correct view don't take a data but your view will be dynamic you if you create a view it if the data underlying data changes everything will change correct ye concept samajh mein aa raha hai ki aapko very 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 important concept hai time travel and zero cloning तो स्नोफ्लेक क्या करता है आप 90 डेज के 90 भी क्लोन बना सकते हो और एक टेराबाइट का डेटा है आपका एक टेराबाइट का डेटा टेबल है और 90 आपने क्लोन बनाए तो आपको स्टोरेज कितना रहेगा आपका कितना आएगा कैन एनी बडी गेस इफ यू आर पेइंग अटेंशन कैन यू गेस हाउ मच स्टोरेज विल बी देयर इफ यू मेक अ नॉर्मली 90 टेराबाइट का 90 कॉपीज बनाया आपने सॉरी एक टेराबाइट के नाइनटी कॉपीज बनाए तो कितना जगह लगेगा स्टोरेज नाइनटी टेराबाइट नाइनटी ओके तो आपको जीरो जीरो एक्सेप्ट द ओरिजिनल टेबल आपको जीरो स्टोरेज लगेगा द रीजन इज दैट snowflake never updates the data it creates a micro partition and that's why in the back end it store that historical data so aapko wo 90 jo terabyte hai wo uska clone banayega khali that's it okay so you will able to access the data with the zero cloning concept so you don't you will not have maybe not exactly zero byte because some data will change uh, delta rahega but most of the thing you will not the storage cost will not much okay let me show if i have a uh, very good diagram from official diagram from snowflake they don't have too much diagram but let me try uh, snowflake time travel okay, this is one example um you have a table these are the micro partition in the table you have id name and country these are the three columns these are the micro partition under that on are you able to see this let me zoom in hope you are able to see that on 15 10 20 21 you added something then deleted on 17 you added and then de deleted okay on 16 10 
you added something then again you added something on 1710 and 1710 you deleted something so there are certain micro partitions are there so you can go ahead and write a query select star from table name at on timestamp equal to 16 16 ko ye baje kya tha mera data 16 ko so it will be having the data in between these two so it will give me this data like representation of this data whatever the data is there you can get that data back it uh, that's how you will do the time travel with this syntax on to get the data entire data for that table on the day and time of this snapshot what was my data that's a time travel is it similar to how s3 does versioning yes yes s3 does the versioning but if you want to retrieve the data on particular day and time how you will it retrieve Aap retrieve kaise karoge? you will have to write a script to go to that timestamp get the version and make that version as a current so that you can retrieve the data on that day correct yes yes but so Snowflake also does in the back end is the same thing what you do or plan to do. But the thing is that it's very fast, right? And in S3 versioning, the every version takes a space. If you create a version yes. and your object size is 10 MB, the next version also takes the 10 MB, correct? Or the incremental or whatever the data it is. So here it is it is taking a delta data but it is less storage compared to the previous one because it is doing entire or that micro partition is being used very important concept uh, now i'll want to go and tell you about the time travel so sorry uh zero cloning Hello. Yes. Uh, sir, tell me what is the difference between there is a one concept inside the redshift that is the detention period, detention days. We have to mention the detention days. For which days we have to retain that historical data. Then it will be similar to time travel concept of Snowflake. No? Correct. Correct. But in that case, you you are retaining the historical data, but storage you will see it is costing you. Correct. In that yes, case, uh -huh. uh, storage is multiplied. If you retain the historical data, 10 times changes happen. It is retaining that and then you will cost that much in, this, uh, in the redshift. Here, it's not costing that much because uh, it's just keeping a delta and it's a micro, very micro partitions. Um, and that's helped you to reduce your cost. Okay. I think I have a clone, zero clone, snowflake. So let's say you have an employee and uh, it's a metadata of employee. When you create a clone out of employee, it creates a clone of metadata of an employee and you have this storage. So it just point only the storage, the micro partition. Okay, because this data is already there. It's just making the metadata pointing to it. So do you know in S3 e tag? So every object has an e tag. So in the back end, Snowflake is using that as a meta that metadata to tag it and using that metadata you can have a clone uh, of course in s3 is a different story that you will have if you want to do with the 
clone in Snowflake uh, or in S3, it's if you want to do on yourself, it's hectic, a lot of operations, things you will have to manage. But in Snowflake, Snowflake is automatically doing it for you. And in a large scale and more efficiently, so you don't have to bother what is happening in the back end. Okay. We'll see these concepts in more detail. Uh, but these two features are very, very, very good features from Snowflake. And these for, with these two features, it is cracking the market because I remember most of the time, business analysts and little non-technical people, they don't trust the technology. They, they prefer to take the backup of data as much as possible. They fear that if something goes wrong, wrong they will lose their data. So they create a backup. In other databases, if you create a backup, it costs a lot lot of overhead in snowflake it's more easy if, even if you create your own copy it is based on the storage and metadata and then uh, it's a zero clone basically because it's the partition is already there okay so very important and very good feature from snowflake uh, which is the time travel and mainly the cloning zero clone Again, there are certain features which are very important. The fail safe. In the fail safe, you can recover your historical data. And the standard is uh, seven uh, days for standard account for all account. You can recover data, whatever the data was there in the seven days back. Uh, you can also have column level security uh, to apply masking policies to columns in database and views. Um, this is again available in Enterprise Edition. We'll see this feature in detail. You can also, as I mentioned, you can also have the role level security uh, to apply to the access and policies to enable views um, and required Enterprise Edition or higher. Uh, this is the again, role level security you can also achieve in Redshift uh, or any other database. You can search on the role level security. Object tagging to apply the tags to Snowflake object to facilitate tracking of sensitive data and resource monitoring. So you can ta tag the data so that you can, just like in S3, you can tag. Here also, you can tag your data. So these features also we'll see in detail. Uh, on Before moving to the standard and external query extended uh, SQL support, I just want to stop here uh, and in the next lecture, I will cover on time travel, uh, zero cloning, uh, fail safe, how to enable that or column level security, row level security, object tagging, how to do that, that we will cover, okay? Any other question do you have? Yes, sir. in uh, not time travel uh, if feature, if we delete the base data or the original data and del will it create any problem for time travel? Yeah. So if you delete the data in Snowflake, what happens? Does it delete the data? Does it save the data? Very good question. What happens to micro, micro partitions? Uh, does it go in historical? Uh, what feature if you enable, it will delete. What feature if you enable, even if we say delete, it shows deleted, but does data gets deleted from the storage or not? Can I retrieve the data? So by mistake, I drop the table. Now what happened? Can I retrieve the data, the table itself, entire table itself, and the data that was there 90 days back? Can I query? The data just now I dropped and I want to query that data uh, and retrieve the data from 15 days back. Can I do that? What is the DR, disaster recovery? What happens if system goes down and I have to backup? Can I restore my data, whatever there in before the backup, before the failover? Very important concept, uh, questions. We'll see this in detail, okay?
और ऐसे होता है बाय मिस्टेक डेटा ड्रॉप कर दिया अरे वो डेटा अच्छा था मुझे रिट्राइव करना है कैन आई डू दैट डेटा इज स्टिल देयर और नो दे नो और इज देर रिवर्जन अवेलेबल देयर दैट विल सी इन मोर डिटेल थैंक यू ओके बट वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन any other question hi hi sir so what is the we can say fact table and dimension table or it is only theoretical concept because i'm not able to understand yeah mm -hmm. so yes that's a theoretical concept uh, it's a data modeling concept uh, you it's not a software or something it's a data modeling so when i store the data for data warehouse so there is a pattern in which i should store a data and that is the dimension table and fact table and why it is being used because it's the best way to manage the data uh, for query performance for storing joining for mostly it is used in a data warehouse that modeling is used in a data warehouse uh, i'm not sure whether i cover oltp and olap uh, if not i'll share few details before i talk about that or during the project i will share this detail okay thank you it's a data modeling concept okay okay so i'm going to drop now and i'll communicate uh, the next timing whether it's open in person or virtual um, i'll communicate that timing and then we'll see the important features from snowflake as a practice now do the multi factor authentication enable on your side um and do again the practice of connectivity uh with these different things and i know uh there is a and study about the different edition uh, of course all of you have uh, subscribed to enterprise edition only so that is sufficient for us okay Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.